and fire it up. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. The last time you saw this K10, we were getting that junkyard motor back from Mesa and Andrew was installing a bunch of parts. But we still have a few more things to tidy up on the motor before we get it into the truck. So let's get back to work. So I'm just gonna go ahead and squirt this block black. So we're gonna have a nice little contrast with the poly black satin valve covers and intake manifold. It should look pretty cool. We're gonna leave the head silver. All these nice little ICT billet parts will stay a machine look. So it should look real sharp inside the truck. Got a brand new AC Delco Gen 5 coil packs on here. I have some adapters for our sensors and also steam port kit. Just the one. Special guest in the house. I got some hired help. What's up guys? Handle all the hard work. Andrew didn't know how to put the plugs in, so I'm putting spark plugs in. Did a couple YouTube searches too, and I just still couldn't <laughs> figure it out, so. But I'm over here man. faking it till I make it. We just got all the sensors in, ECT sensor, you know, oil pressure sensor, spark plugs. Got this motor looking good. Just finished putting the induction and the injection on this thing. Our factory injectors installed into our brand new Holly EFI fuel rails. I got my crossover hose, my dash six line. I went ahead and also got a fuel pressure gauge so we can keep a monitor on our fuel system. I'm gonna go ahead and keep dressing this thing up and we're gonna get this thing dropped in the truck real soon here. I'm ready to get this harness laid up inside the truck. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to find some space underneath the dash and mount all this stuff. Wire it up and fire it up, yeah. Well, after some consideration, moving this harness around and trying to find somewhere to mount the ECU, and this thing is not gonna be a great fit behind the dash. So I am going to mount it on the engine bay. The connectors, the ECU itself, they're all waterproof. PSI gives us a stock mounting tray, and I'm probably gonna try to mount everything somewhere back here. installing a brand new Mishimoto aluminum radiator with a 16 inch fan here and a shroud. I needed to get this in here so I know what style hoses I would need, where I was gonna put my overflow. I also have this cooler here for our transmission. I'm gonna find some space probably in front of my condenser here. I'll make another bracket and bolt it to the core support. Just as important as having a great running engine is also being able to monitor that engine. What we're gonna be using to monitor our new swap is gonna be a set of Dakota Digital RTX gauges, a retro series. So it keeps the old analog sweeping style, the old analog needle, but also adds in a bunch of digital functions. So it has a digital display here and here that'll be able to show park reverse neutral drive. It'll show speed, all other engine inputs that are on our CAN bus because we are gonna be also using the BIM unit and this is an OBD2 interface that's gonna be able to give all the information that's coming from the ECU as far as pressures, temperatures, RPM. This is kind of like the brain of the whole system. All right, got my cool little bracket made, my box taped on. Should be nice for that tight, tight little cramped C10 dash. The Dakota Digital control box is mounted under the dash. I have most of the wiring completed. To finish it off, I need to mount the transmission and the engine into the chassis so I can know the measurements of a couple of wires, and then I can come back in later and finalize the install for the Dakota Digital box. We're mating a 4L80E transmission up to our six liter here. We needed to space our flex plate back a little bit so it's going to mate up with our starter properly and also meet up into the torque converter. I'm going to go ahead and use this little tool from ICT Billet. So what it is is a flex plate or flywheel holder it's meant for LS engines. Bolt this little guy up here and then you won't have to worry about having to get second person or struggling to get the torque right on your flywheel bolt.
All right, she's in there. I have a couple concerns. On the driver's side in the back here, on the valve cover, you see there's part of the body that's touching right behind that connector. And so I'm gonna have to either bend it or trim it. Definitely real close up here in the front on our cross member. Luckily we've used the pan we did because it would have been hitting. It is touching in this corner just a little bit. So I'm gonna have to chop that little corner off. Now we have plenty of room. Over here you can see, boom, clearance. No touching, no rubbing, all good. Now we can move on. All right guys, we got our new transfer case for the K10. It came with no sensors or anything. So we just have to switch over everything from the old one onto the new one. So we got these bolts and they're super dirty. Just gonna run them on the, the wire wheel real quick. Wire wheel, real wheel quick. Right, wire wheel, wheel quick, yeah. Get these bad boys cleaned up. All right, guys, we got the transfer case all bolted up to the transmission. And now she's ready to hand off to Andrew. So we got the bell housing, made it up to the engine. Always make sure your torque converter is not wedged. Make sure with the bolts completely torqued down that you can still move your converter. Trans mount going up, nothing too fancy. Stock 4LED transmission mount, so get just stabbed in there. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this mount in, bolt the cross member to the mount, and then get this set up here so I could get these holes marked out and drilled. Now I'm gonna start dressing up the engine. I'm gonna go ahead and start putting the ICT build accessory drive kit in. This is a stock location kit. It's just an awesome, beautiful billet aluminum finish. We have factory AC Delco components that come along with this kit, a sand end compressor, AC Delco alternator, and power steering pump also. It's a complete kit, so you're not gonna be missing anything when you wanna put this thing in. Accessories are completely installed. I've also got my hoses ran here for the power steering. Went ahead and cut these all to length. I got my clamps on. I'm gonna start laying out the engine harness. I got a little bit of a hiccup. I was uh, hoping that these valve covers would work because I just spent so much time cutting out a little bit of the material back here so they could fit and come on and off and then found out that they hit the alternator with this bracket set. So we ended up taking the beauty cover off. We're gonna change the harness that I had on there. It was just a, an LS3 stock harness that just fit under the cover, but now they're gonna be exposed. So I'm gonna use a different harness, one from ICT Billet. That's a lot cleaner looking. A Little bit of a change in plan, but no big deal. Focused here on the starter, the engine harness gets its power for its small relay box right here through the starter stud. So this is gonna go directly to the battery. And then I'm also gonna have one other power cable going up to the alternator, all teed up from right here. I also have the interior fuse box is fused off of here. It has a fusible link right here in the wire. I routed my fuel hose from the frame rail here. You can see uh, up this way, up along this bracket that I have here with the P-clamp over the exhaust and I'm gonna get the fuel rail feed hose fitting plumbed and we'll have a complete fuel system. All right, I'm gonna start assembling our battery cables. So I'm gonna be running a two gauge wire. First, I'm gonna start with our alternator power feed. So there's gonna be our two gauge power cable coming from the alternator and then it's gonna go down to the starter and from the starter back up to the battery. Going back under the truck to make my connection for my ground. As you can see here, there's a nice stud or a threaded boss right here. I believe this is where the factory ground went. Now that I've got these battery cables all finished up, I'm gonna move to the transmission cooler lines. finish off our transmission wiring. I have my range selector switch connector here that I'm gonna go ahead and made into the existing part of the harness that I have. 
So I'm gonna get under the truck and get that going, getting that mated together so we can have our input for our park and neutral so the ECU knows when to switch the timing map so it can idle better. Now that the range selector switch is pinned out, we got the information going to the ECU. Uh, I got the gauges in here temporarily. I just wanted to make sure I have oil pressure. That was the most important thing. Everything from gear selection, fuel level, time, all the other things still need to get calibrated, except for my volt gauge and my oil pressure gauge. That's kind of all I, I cared about. So we're about to do our first startup of the K10. I'm gonna prime the engine oil system, crank it over a couple times without the fuel pump hooked up, build some oil pressure, and then we're gonna start it up. This is what I do around here. Custom work, baby. Oh, that's funny. Ready. wasn't misfiring, wasn't doing anything strange. Only thing left to do is I gotta do that leak down test to show all you guys that this thing works great. But Andrew, but what Andrew, about the old rings? What about the piston rings, bro? As you heard in the video, it still needs an exhaust system and a handful of other things. Our air conditioning, plumbing needs to be installed. All of our coolant lines need to be ran as well as our intake and we're waiting on a throttle cable, a new throttle cable. A handful of stuff to get done. Truck's almost completed. Seeing it start is a big, big hurdle. We have full TMI interior getting done in this truck also. We have our custom drive shafts being made right now by Drive Shaft Power. If you wanna see the K10 in 100% completion, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We also have some more content coming. We have a bag C10 truck that we've been working on as well as our twin turbo Chevelle. And don't forget, we're doing our push rod suspension for the EVC10. Subscribe to the channel, don't miss out. You know what I call my little friends? These are called lightning makers. Oh baby, let's go get this first day k tents fired up, baby! <laughs> Isn't that perfect? So we're continuing to dress the six liter with a bunch of noises. All right, that's the happy dance.